Today we're going to be etching a Pyrex pan. Um, so we're going to use Armor Etch, we're going to use our Cricut, and we're going to start with by, by making a stencil. So once you have your design in Cricut Design Space, you put a box behind it, center it, and attach it, and then we'll, we'll go ahead and make it. You do want to mirror your design. Um, it's going to flip it because we're going to put it on the bottom of the Pyrex to make sure we can see it through the top. So after it's cut out, we need to do what's called reverse weeding. So that means we're going to be taking out the pieces of our design instead of the pieces around the design. Um, that way, when we put our etching cream on in a little bit, you know, we'll be able to leave our design behind, <laughs> which is the whole point. I do find that larger designs tend to work best when you're etching. Um, if you try to get, I mean, you can get detailed. It's just, it's just trickier. You have to be cautious of bleeding. So when I do this one, the stem can get a little tricky, but I think the final result is worth it. So I'm using a Pyrex. I should warn you that older Pyrex doesn't always work with the uh, armor etching cream that we're going to be using today. Um, so, but I have never had a problem with new ones. Uh, so you're going to clean it with rubbing alcohol and then we're going to transfer our design. So this is transfer tape that I'm using, burnishing it really well onto the transfer tape and then we'll put it onto the bottom of our Pyrex. This is a low tack transfer tape I'm using. I really like it a lot. So you want to line it up and lay it down and you're going to rub it on there really, really well. Peel off the transfer tape and there's our design. So you do want to really take your time uh, making sure that the decal, your stencil, is really, really applied to um, the bottom of your Pyrex. If there's any bubbles around where your stencil is, then the etching cream could potentially bleed through. So just really take your time. And then I like to tape off the edges with painter's tape. Um, just gives me a little bit more working area in case, uh, in case there's bleed. And you're ready to etch. So uh, definitely wear gloves. This etching cream, um, I like to use a pretty liberal amount. I have seen where you can use quite a small amount, but honestly, once we're done, I just scrape it back into the jar <laughs> and then we can reuse it multiple times. Um, once this is on there, make sure you get everything nice and covered. I like to let it sit for three minutes and then I actually stir it and then I let it sit for another three minutes. That's just how what's worked for me. So here I'm scraping it back into the jar and now it's time to wash off. So I still wear my glove for this process, as you can see. Um, I just think it's important, you know, to protect yourself from the chemicals. And once you have it washed off well, you can peel off the decal, which is a little tricky. So I did use Oracle 651, which is a permanent adhesive. But since it's not staying on there very long, it usually comes off pretty easy. You can use a removable vinyl or a stencil vinyl that all works here. Um, 651, I, oh, I just always have that on hand. So once you have it all removed, I just give it a wash just to ensure that I did get all of the etching cream off of the pan because any glass that it touches is going to etch. And then that's it. So I hope you've enjoyed this